Look, here is the new Band-Aid plastic strip with new Super Stick. It sticks better than any other bandage. The proof? Take a dry egg at room temperature. Touch the egg with any other bandage. Brand X, brand Y, brand Z. Not one sticks. But a Band-Aid plastic strip with new Super Stick sticks tight instantly. Watch it again in slow motion. No pressure, yet we can lift the egg, even boil it. And the Band-Aid plastic strip never comes loose. Maybe you don't want to broil eggs this way, but you do want the extra protection of Band-Aid plastic strips. They take better care of little cuts and scratches. They stay put. Yes, even in hot, soapy dishwater. Neat, fresh-colored, almost invisible. Band-Aid plastic strips with new Super Stick stick better than any other bandage. Made only by Johnson & Johnson, the most trusted name in surgical dressings. Be sure you get Band-Aid plastic strips. Replacing the resistors that are bad and out of tolerance has begun. And over in here, I've checked all these. They're all in real good shape. But then when I get, I had to replace one right here, 8.2 uh, meg. But when we get right here, we have a resistor. That's a, a one watt resistor, and all the color is gone. The colors are all gone. I can't even tell what it was. I went to the schematic, and I found out it's a 47K, one watt. Well, what we're going to do is cut that thing out of there. Now, it measures, as you can see, 57. I've got the gator wires hooked up to it. It measures 57, which is too high. So we're going to go ahead and whack that out of there and put this nice new uh, new jobby in there. Metal oxide, I guess is what they call it. I don't know what it's called, but we're going to go ahead and put that one in there. That's a 1 watt 47K ohm resistor. One more thing I wanted to show you. As you go along in the final stages of your chassis, whether it be a radio or a television or a piece of test equipment, it doesn't matter, and it has these kinds of uh, uh, tube sockets. With the, little, with the little things on the bottom that close and open when you stick the tube pin down in. It's just a little, uh, little deal like this. Well, after a while, they get stretched out. They, 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 they come apart and they stay apart. And you got to kind of bring them back together. And the best way to do that is by using a, a long pair of needle nose or a pair that you know is, is small enough to get down in there. I just kind of take the old needle nose and stick them up in there and just get it on each side of the pin. you got to be real careful now. You know, this is not something you muscle and gorilla along. And you, let me see if I can get it up in there. You just kind of, just kind of squeeze those pins together a little bit on each side. Bring them, just kind of close the trap door and go to the next one. It's kind of difficult doing it one-handed here. I like to have both hands available when I'm doing this, but... That's all you got to do. And what that does is when you stick your tube pins or your tube down into the socket, the, uh, the tube pins will make much better contact on those. Now I'm going to go ahead and go around and squeeze each one together and then snip out this resistor and replace it. That takes care of that. It's in. It looks real good. And it's measuring 46.8 K. It's supposed to be 47. Fantastic. I like that a lot better. Here's what that old one looked like, you know. It's really no good. You know, my philosophy is this. When, when it, you can do what you want, of course. A lot of people don't follow the same philosophy, but this is mine. If I don't like what I see, it comes out. Simple as that. If it, if it's, if it's, if it just looks like a piece of driftwood, I mean, even if it's with intolerance, if it looks like a piece of driftwood, out it comes. I don't want resistors in there that look like driftwood, dried up pieces of wood. And you run into that a lot, especially in the old radios. But if I don't like it, or if I measure it and it doesn't measure right, and, and it's you know right on the edge one way or the other, I don't, you know, that's ridiculous. Get it out of there. These things only cost what, I don't know, what, eight, nine cents a piece. I don't want to have to come back in here and do this all again. Uh, I'm going to go through it slowly. I'm going to take my time. And when I get done, I know, or at least I pretty much know, that I've done my very best the first time around. Now here's another uh, one watt resistor that's all, looks like it's got gooey crap all over it. Uh, it's, again, it's difficult to determine the size of that resistor. So I'm going to have to go in the schematic once more to find out what that is because that, again, is coming out of there. I don't like it. And if I don't like it, it goes bye-bye.
That one turned out to be a, a yellow violet orange. I had to remove it and look on the back side in order to find out what the value was. No, another 47k ohm. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And that's pretty much what I'll be doing all the way through here. Uh, I hope in the next hour or two to maybe get, I don't know, maybe I'll get over to this part, this top part done across here like this. One of my uh, YouTube viewers, his name is John, his uh, YouTube handle is Lockmeister. Now, John the Lockmeister is an outstanding TV and radio repairman and restorer. He really is. He, he, he buys some uh, high-end stuff, and he does the kind of job I like to see done. Very meticulous, dots all the I's, crosses all the T's. He's an outstanding repairman. And uh, he made the statement when I first measured this uh, 6,000 ohm 6 watt resistor. Uh, it measured uh, between this point here and the bottom of the resistor. I've disconnected one end. Uh, I read 13,000 ohms with it in the circuit like that. And he made the statement that, you know, it's going to be interesting, John, John uh, to see what that resistor reads with one end disconnected. Uh, it's a 6K. Uh, 6 watt resistor 6,000 ohms 6 watt resistor reading 13,000 ohms when I disconnected it uh, one end and hooked the meter up here and here here's what I get wide open no good it's on this right now I'm on the uh, the 20k scale let's go down to the 2k scale go down to 200 ohms nothing nothing it's wide open so there you go John you wanted to know what that thing was going to read now you know it's wide open and we will be replacing it with what's in this package 6k 10 water one more thing I wanted to show you one of the uh, or a couple actually uh, of the viewers of this video series said you know if I were to have to check all those resistors out, I'd lose track in no time. I, even if I broke it up into squares, I, I would not be able to keep track of which ones I tested and which ones I didn't. It's just so many of them. Well, you know, I understand that. But there is a way that you can uh, make things a lot easier for yourself. Here's a pen I purchased. It's an ultraviolet pen. And what I do is when I test a resistor, I'll go ahead and, and if it tests good, I don't have to change it. I'll just go ahead and mark that resistor with this ultraviolet pen. Then I take this little cheap, crappy little light. It's a, it's a diode light. What do they call this thing? It's called a laser radiation, a laser diode uh, light. It came with the pen in a package. And I got it from Hong Kong. And I'll tell you what, I mean, we're talking some cheap junk here. Uh, it wouldn't even stay together, so I have to use scotch tape. <laughs> it's a brand new item, but it wouldn't stay. It hold, you know, this thing here holds the batteries in. It wouldn't even stay. So right now, scotch tape is holding it together, but that's okay. It does the job. So after I do my marking of the resistor, and uh, later on I'll say, gee, did I check this resistor or that resistor? I'll go ahead and shut the light off, get out this little laser light thing here, and... Uh, You'll see, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not, but uh, down the center of, we'll say, say this dial, this uh, resistor right here, okay? You might be able to see a little blue line, and I've actually got some of it on the, uh, the lead also. Anyway, that, that ultraviolet light is causing that to show up. Can you see that little blue light there, uh, on their stripe on the, on the uh, resistor? And here's another one I tested. You can barely see it. It's easy. There's another one. I just marked that with the, and I put some down the lead also. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Man, there's another one. Anyway, if I'm not sure, all I have to do is shine the light on it. Nothing to it, huh? Piece of cake. There's another one I tested. You can you can barely see it. I, I always mark the lead and the uh, the body of the resistor. And that's one way of doing it. I, I hope you were able to see that. Uh, the pen and the light were five bucks. You know, what do you want for five bucks? You know, I mean, it was free shipping all the way from Hong Kong. They sent it quick. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it won't even stay together, though. I mean, you know, that's, 
Oh, well, you know, the Americans could make something like this, but apparently they don't want to. I guess they don't want to make it for five bucks. <laughs> Thank you. 